So, MIS. Chrissy, could you just give us the page that you're on? Because as soon as I find it. Okay. Yeah. We just, <laughs> could be page do you want, seven, I think. Is it seven? No, it's FOS. Well, I think we're looking at. It's under financial. Well, we've got a bunch of different things. It is. Yep. Okay, so. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, page seven of the actual budget. Okay. Of the actual budget. But right. The, but for the OBS, it is number four. Okay. Thank oh, so you. it's OBS four, and then the detail is on uh, page seven. Has anything changed in this? Um, there's only the big change here is the twenty-four thousand for the three sixty-five live. Um, other than that, the majority of the changes were more the same thing we've been trying to do for the past couple of years is just line the accounts up more appropriately to where things are being spent. So. If you add up um, supplies and expenses, repairs and maintenance, new equipment and replacement equipment, mm -hmm. the 2015 budget is like 81,800. Um, those are where the increases are, but like I said, the major portion of that is the 24,000. I think there's a total increase, let's see on page. Oh, I didn't get to page seven yet, hold on. Um, the total increase in there 36, is 36000 with 24000 of it being related to the 365 live. That's all you have. Um, the IT committee, um, we've been having some feedback back and forth with your department, which has been uh, productive, I think. Um, one of the things that we had discussed was uh, the bid for the um, Microsoft Office 365. Um, I think you had mentioned at some point in time that the quote was for 150 user seat, user access points. Yes. Um, and in some supplemental material that you provided us, um, it stated that I believe we in our physical inventory of PCs we have 98. Um, so one of the questions that the IT subcommittee came up with was. How come, if we only have 98 computers, how come we're asking for 150 user access points? Um, it, the numbers just don't seem to add up for us there. If you could just uh, shed some light on that for us. And I believe that that was related to the fact that there are only the 98 PCs. However, we have additional users. We have part-time employees who share um, workstations, but with the 365 Live, I am under the impression that everyone has to have their own login, each individual user as opposed to each workstation. So that took um, part of it, and then all of the different email accounts that we do have that aren't necessarily for um, direct employees or everyday users, but for like the Board of Selectmen and stuff. So that was, I think, when Paul went back and looked at it, there was about 125 or 130 total users that he needed to have licenses for. And then there was a few extra because I am also under the impression that once it is assigned to a user, it has to be with that user for a year before it can be reassigned to a different user. So if there's turnover during the year, he can't give someone necessarily my um, login, so you would have to give it to somebody else, and then mine, once the year is up, would become open again. But in the interim, we can't not have the license for the user. Okay, and um, about where did we get the, the dollar amount figure of 24000 um, specifically? Um, does, and does that cover all the implementation costs to update all the computers that we have? And, get everything off and running. I have that here. Paul had received a quote. I'm trying to see if I can find a vendor here for you from all the backup that we have. Um, but I do believe that the 24000 was expected to encompass all of the costs related to getting it up and running. I don't think that there was any additional cost. 
for that. And I think where we're going with that question is, is the twenty four thousand would be a. Um, it's an annual. It's an annual licensing. Yes, I okay. do know that. Sorry. Yep. Um, but that would cover all the. There would be no additional implementation charges to put all the software on the computer. Correct. Um, twenty four k a year. What's that? Twenty four k a year. A year. Is that was one of the questions that we had. Just to. Yep. Um, then. Um, we asked for just so the chair is aware. We asked for um, inventory sheets, which were provided um, to see what you know, what computers were running, what software. Um, one of the questions we asked um, the finance department was, "What was the standard package um, for uh, when the town purchases a computer? What comes on it, um, and what do we have to purchase additionally?" and um, the answer that we received, which everybody received in the email, is based on the department needs, they get their software that they need. And where we were going with that question was, um, from what we've read about Office 365, is that if, if each town computer is uh, now currently buying Microsoft Office to use their word processing or Excel spreadsheets or PowerPoint, um, we were under the assumption that the that software would be then included in the twenty four thousand. So therefore, that cost would essentially disappear on a new computer purchase because we would have the ability to download that software from the cloud. Um, that was more for information. We'll keep everybody up on stage, um, up to date with that information. Um, I think the last thing we had was was the the priority of we've been asking all the department heads to kind of triage their needs and stuff like that needs versus wants and uh, how in a general sense if you could 365 for the town of Hampton how I mean kind of kind of sell it to us how important is that, is it for the town to get this to implement it what what are the benefits to the town government function um, to have 365 in place, just so people are aware, because not a lot of people know about, you know, the the, the perhaps, software. Perhaps just explain what 365. Yeah, is. that's so that's probably a better way to put it. Don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. I think the best way is more. It's the cloud. It's a cloud-based um, system, and I do want to correct myself. I found my notes from my discussions with Paul, and it's actually the quote is for 125 seats, and right now we have approximately 115 users. So that would need those 125. So there's only 10 extra seats that can be used for what I had. I did explain correctly that you know the user can only is for the whole year and stuff. Chrissy, so, that $24,000 licensing level is that the level at 125, and then it goes to another tier? Yeah, that is for 125. Yes, and then I would assume that it would go to a different tier depending on you know if you add. I don't think we would ever add one user, so I'm assuming that they give you cost breaks going um, to like 150 or 130 or whatever you would go to. But it is a, it's 24,000 for the 125 users is the quote that we received. So it's a cloud base. It will bring down. Um, but you don't know if you maxed out then. I mean, did you say you need 125 and that's what they gave you for a quote? No, no, Rather I said that this, the quote was for 125 seats. And right now we have approximately 115 users because Nick had pointed out we only had 98 PCs or 96 PCs. So they were wondering, uh, the question of the IT subcommittee was, why are you uh, requesting the 125 seats? And the reason for the 125 seats, I was just explaining this, because we have approximately 115 users, part-time, some shared positions, even though they use the same PC, everyone has to have their own login, mm -hmm. is what I am being, um, how it's being explained to me. It's cloud-based, to go back to uh, Steve's question, and. Um, we won't have to have a mail server anymore, so there is a cost savings to us for that. We won't have to maintain the mail server because all of them, uh, it will be maintained in the cloud. So there's equipment uh, related costs that will be reduced and uh, time, storage, those types of things for not having to uh, have the storage available here. And also another thing is when our, if our system ever goes down, people will still be able to have access to their email as long as the internet doesn't 
blow up and crash on us. But now, right now, if we lose a server or if we lose our mail server, then it, employees don't have access to their mail emails. And we do. Everyone does a lot by email now, the days as you would expect. Also, um, Paul was telling me that Microsoft is. And I think this is a few years out still, but in fairness, Microsoft is coming up with a new uh, pricing fee, and they will be charging $300 per year for Office Pro, which is what we have, uh, what we use now. So eventually, the and like I said, I don't believe that that's supposed to be next year. I think he said it was a year or two out before they're going to be doing that. But Microsoft is in the process of charging, of setting up a fee schedule to charge the $300 per uh, for Office Pro, so there eventually will be a cost related to that. Um, uh, let's see, I'm just going to read from my notes here because it's been a long time since I read them. It says, cost savings will come in the future when we do not have to replace servers, update software, time to reconfigure software, and once the front end work is done, not much involved to maintain it. So that was kind of where Paul was going with that. And I know that IT, um, in regards to priority, Nick had was asking about priorities. And although I'm their department head, I kind of turned to them because I don't pretend like I know a lot about computers. But I turned to them, and this is definitely on the top of uh, Paul's list of something that he would like to see um, implemented here and brought to the town. Like there's a lot of. Uh Streamlining, streamlining and efficiency benefits out of it yes. once it gets all implemented. Uh, the last question I had was, um, you have a plan to, um, that right now that you're working to, to uh, change computers or update computers. Um, replace or? Replace. Okay. That's, yeah, that's the word I was looking for. Um, in the budget, it, it, it the plan is to purchase, I'm reading from the, the part three of the questions that uh, you returned to us on the 3rd of December. Uh, the question was, number and type of computers planned to purchase in the proposed 2016 budget. You said the plan is to purchase 20, um, depending on butter, budgetary restraints. Um, how many were you able to purchase last year with uh, the default budget? Uh, we purchased 10, and then we did put in a purchase order at the end of the year for the additional 10. So once we finalize all of our end of year numbers, hopefully we will not have to delete that that encumbrance and we will have the, uh, all 20 of them. But with 10 of them have already been purchased in stock and probably all been distributed. Okay. Um, that's all that I had from the department. Any other second. questions? Um, no, I have something else I wanted to ask. And I'll do a couple of them. Thank you, Chairman. Chairman. Um, just a couple of things. You say the Office Pro will go to three hundred dollars. Is that part of the Office three sixty five? No, no, that would be um, Office Pro is what we use right now. <laughs> so I was just pointing that out. It's not has nothing to do with the three sixty five. It's just that Microsoft, and this is just what we're hearing. Okay. In the next year or two, is going. I don't know if it's for individuals or only for businesses. I don't, I'm not sure on that. Oh, but sorry. they are um, going to be supposed to be charging a fee of three hundred dollars for all um, Office Pros Pro, Pro that's on not, a yearly that's basis. That's non-cloud. Um, yes, absolutely. I got you. I, so I, I was just using that as a comparison when he was asking for pros right. of why we would want 365 Live. Right. Okay, another, another question from what I understand about, and I'm not as knowledgeable about this as some on this committee are, but I was under the impression there were different levels of seats you could buy or use or seats, whatever you want to call those terms. They used to call it seats. Like, I think they're still called seats. That's what Paul referred to them as. Back when you bought lumps of seats for servers and stuff like that, they called it seats. So I'm assuming mm -hmm. it's the same label. They have different, do they, don't they have different levels of Office 365 you can get for each user? And if if so, my question is, are you, it all has to do with how you implement it, which is really not budget committee's pr prerogative, but I'm just curious how you're going to you have a plan to migrate this across the whole town all at once, or are you going to let some people start off on a lighter version and work up to wherever they might need later on? This is, that's the question I really need to know because they have different seat costs depending on how much you want to buy. You want a Chevy or a Cadillac, okay? Make it simple for everybody sitting here. And are you gonna try to get 
the deluxe model all the way across, or you're going to start off some people on so they can get used to it before we go to the more expensive version. I'm under the impression that the different levels are for if you're buying it on an individual basis. So like if Mike Pierce goes to Best Buy or wherever you go to buy 365 Live. Mm -hmm. But for a business, the business version, I'm under the impression that there is just the one version of it. And I believe one of the questions that may have come to me from the subcommittee was in line to that, and I'd have to look up the an exact answer. But I remember I'm under the impression that the... That is true for an individual, that you can choose the Chevy or the Cadillac. Yeah, that's but right, for yeah. the uh, business version, which is the kind of the version that we would have to buy as a town, it was only one in that. Um, so there isn't different levels, I okay, guess, is the so best it's, way it's to. All straight yeah. across and whether the they would implement it all the way across the town at once, I don't know. My guess would be that they would do it by departments mm -hmm. and probably start at the town hall first. Mm -hmm to see how it went, because that's a smaller group of users, and then move out from there. Okay. Um, I know right now they're going through the process of updating the everyone to Windows 10, and I know they're basically just kind of, they have a goal that has to be done, I think, by July for whatever reason. Um, maybe the other one isn't going to be serviced anymore, but they're going through and, you know, when someone's gone, they're updating individual computers and stuff to Windows 10, so. And I have one more question that's unrelated to your budget. It has to do with... Um, the 24000 why would we take that out of the MIS fund, which has $29,000 sitting there for 100 years? I don't have an answer for that. I suggest that we take it out of that fund, because the fund was started in, what, 1997 or something of that yes, order. I believe so. And it's been sitting here all this time. It's taxpayers' money just sitting there mildewing. Mildewing? Did I say mildewing? Mildewing. So I suggest we take it out of there and not reduce your budget by $24,000. Have time to put that in. You might have to need a warrant article. I think that would have to be a warrant article, correct? Sir? Yes. Yes, so it would have to be a warrant. They have time to manufacture one of those real quick. That's in the trust, Mike? Trust funds? Yes. Yeah, yeah trust fund. Yeah, it says it's it called the MIS fund. It was written in 97 or something like that. So to, this would be this particular expense. It was 1997, I believe. I think you're right. I think I looked at it. It was $29,840. Yep. And they used about half of it in 98 or something like that, and they haven't touched it since. I didn't even know it existed until somebody pointed it out to me. And I don't miss much. <laughs> okay. Any other questions, Mike? Because I want to get going. Okay. That's it for me. So, I said Stephen and then Tim. Okay, so I just want to summarize that, uh, first of all, there was an IT committee appointed by the selectmen a few years ago, and it, the 365 was discussed at that time. I was on that committee with Tim and a few other people. Um, the savings are not only going to be in actual hardware, in that remote, you know, the, the cave, as we call it, um, but as well, there's going to be some time saved in having to manage Absolutely. email accounts. You know, mm -hmm. it's going to be done from the cloud. Yes. So there'll be there'll be a couple of savings there. Yes. So this is long overdue. Thank you very much. I know it's been a topic of discussion for a while. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Tim? Thank you, Stephen. You're most welcome. The, uh, <clears throat> of course, we reviewed the uh, the answers we got from, from uh, I guess from the Board of Selectmen, through you, uh, from on the IT committee, uh, it was stated 150, so perhaps that was erroneous. There would be 150 uh, subscriptions. Yeah, and I think 150 had been uh, said, but that's, I... That's fine. So it, that, that, that just changes the calculation. I mean, we were looking at $13.33 a month for those seats, and now it's like $16 a month for those seats um, with the 125 that you have targeted. But some of the other questions that we asked, I guess I need to get confirm confirmation on. Uh, one of the questions we asked was whether or not the uh, your, your IT department is covering the entire town government or certain segments of it. And I think the answer was essentially, we do some work for fire department, we don't do anything with the police, and we basically cover everybody else. This would be that, covering fire. I can tell you who this would cover. Right. It would cover fire. It would cover public works. Right. Um, everyone at the town office, mm -hmm. and I believe that is it. And then whatever, like like I said, there's 150, approximately 150 users. So some people who have email. Um, 150 users. You said 115. Okay, okay. Approximately 115. Users. Okay. So, but those are the departments. We don't do anything. This would not be covering the police. So not the police is out. Us. Yes. And you know, 
I've seen the remote, I, you know, because we have on the annual reports, we have the, the pay for every employee in town, including the police. Yes. And I think that number is, you know, uh, something around 150. Right? And for I thought that, uh, about a total of 150 empl on average. Oh, but, employees? Yeah. I think if you are looking at the town report, there's usually between 355 and 400, depending on how many seasonal workers we have. Uh, well, you they're all know, listed uh, in the town report. The seasonal wouldn't be uh, covered under needing uh, office. No, it would right? not. But right. I'm just saying, if you're, I thought you were talking about the town report and wages, and there's uh, more than 150 people. Right. That seemed to be the most massive universe to go after, and then chop from there, I chop off the seasonal. Gotcha. And I'm looking at what. So 150 could be fairly accurate. Of a fairly number. reasonable number. That's why you or said full-time employees and part-time, right? Mm, possibly, it might be a little higher if you include the permanent part-time employees. Now it's envisioned, from what I heard you say earlier, that uh, uh, all the all all personnel, perhaps except excepting the seasonal, but all personnel would need a subscription uh, to Office 365, where they do not presently have a computer now because they're sharing a computer. I don't know that every single employee at Public Works, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. uses a computer or has a login. So I don't know if that is true. Um, everyone in the town hall does. I know, I'm pretty sure that all the firefighters do have logins, so they would be included in that. But I, my best guess is even people at Public Works who are not necessarily seasonal, I don't think that every single Public Works employee has a, a login or uses the computer would be my best guess on that. I would have to look into it further, but I wouldn't guess they would. So the active number of 125 is about 10 over the current anticipated Correct. use, right? Yes. And on that 115, which is the intended current yes. uh, use, if we were rolling it out today, right. uh, do you have any sense of how many of those uh, 115 is actually part-time employees? Or employees, I should say it differently are employees who do not presently have a computer. You mean that share, but share a computer? Right. Okay, I can count the town office people for you. I think at fire, everyone, um, all of the firefighters definitely do not have their own computer. Okay. Um, but they're not part-time either, so you were asking about part-time. Well, that's why I, I yeah. changed my question around. So uh, Part-time in the town computers. office, I can let you know there's one upstairs. I don't need an absolute about number. Six a, in a the good town guess office. would be sufficient. In the town office, there's probably at least six people who yeah. share overall, a workstation. Would you, overall, what would be your gut in terms of the number that's sharing? Just of sharing? Yeah. Well, yeah. if you include all of the firefighters, I don't know how many uh, computers they have over at fire, but I know that we have about 44 individuals in the fire department, and I'd say that one, two, three, four. I'd say. Out of that 44, six of them probably have their own workstations that they work at all the time. And then I think the captains would be next in line. There's four captains. Uh -huh. So probably about 10 who basically have their own. And then my best guess is that the firefighters probably have access to, one to one the ones machines. that the captains so use. So basically be three, dozen, three dozen <clears throat> employees in the fire department alone are in a shared computer scenario. Yeah, I know that every firefighter does not have their own computer. Right. I, I know that for a fact. But I do know that they have logins and emails from the fire department. I'm very fairly confident in that fact. Because what we're looking at is we have a, a situation where you have quite a large number of people who do not have a computer now that we would be paying for a subscription that probably isn't needed except for the fact that you need them to have email, apparently, and maybe maybe Microsoft Word, and that's about it kind of thing. I would disagree with that a little because of the fact that these, when I'm talking about the part-time employees who share workstations, um, let's use recreation for an example. They have two different secretaries in there because a full-time position was removed um, and was replaced with two part-time. So one of the part-timers, I think, works full days Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and half days on Tuesday and Thursday, and the other one works the other half of Tuesday and Thursday. Also in the town clerk, they have a similar situation where they have two part-time employees. One of them works three days a week, and the other one works two days a week. 
Right. So the people what about who are the, sharing. What about that large group of firefighters that are in the sharing scenario? What kind of, I mean, what? why would what, Why would they need? I don't know why. Except for email and maybe sure. Word or something like that? EMS, yeah. That, that's where they do all yeah. of their ambulance run reports and bra- stuff. An internet browser and uh, email, and that's about it, right? No, I think for EMS, like Fred just piped up, I believe when they come back from an ambulance run, depending on who was in charge of that call or whatever, they enter okay. stuff into a okay. into the system. But the application is an EMS application, right? But they would need to be able to log into a computer. Mm-hmm. They would need right, to Right, but not necessarily log to log into the cloud is the point. They, they, they have no need to do that. If the, if, the, if the application is not in the cloud, it's on the PC. They can continue to share their PC for that application. They don't need a subscription on the cloud to do that. Probably not to use that application, right. but so they have what, email. So. so it would be, as I was saying, it would just be for an email access for, for, for those people, like likely. Well, we don't know because we didn't ask that question, right. I guess. Right? And I don't know how the fire department, I don't know their complete operations, so I don't feel that I should answer in regards I get to, to exactly saying, what though. they use their computers for. Not necessarily every user you have needs to have access to the cloud. And as we, even with 115 licenses with a threshold of 125, you may want to look at some positions that don't need access to the cloud. They would still have email. I don't. I believe that they have to. Their email oh. would be in the cloud because, therefore, their mail or email server and stuff is going away. No, they would need access to an email server on the cloud, not Correct. necessarily a subscription right. of the level that we're talking about. Mike was bringing up these seats. Well, they're actually they're really called subscriptions, and they do come in various flavors, both on individual and corporate level. Uh, and you can buy into more than one plan. Um, and, and so there's, there is more granularity uh, available than would be suggested in terms of the plan we have in play right now uh, that perhaps could give a better return on investment for us relative to what I've been hearing so far. Um, and, and I'll just leave that element of it right there for now. Uh, the MIS fund that was referenced was created in 97, as you all know, $29,000 in the next year, 98. Fifteen and a half thousand were taking out, leaving fourteen and a half thousand dollars, and nothing has been taken out since 1998. Uh, the trustees of the trust fund has grown that fourteen thousand dollars back to twenty, almost thirty thousand dollars. So there's thirty thousand dollars sitting, roughly thirty thousand dollars sitting there. Uh, interestingly enough, that Warren Article 97 actually called for the creation of a IT committee to make recommendations for withdrawing from that fund. Uh, but regardless, your, what I understand from your, your earlier answer, there was no consideration in using that fund as a means of financing this or even your equipment level line items, right? I mean, this wasn't even thought about. No. Okay. And um, I think, Madam Chair, I'll leave it at that because this was basically a Q&A workshop. Finally, finishing our budget workshop. Thank you very much, Christy. You're welcome. Um, one thing, in <clears throat> going over this, and we're not making any determinations on this tonight, but we are at a late date, and I know that next Tuesday is the deadline for Warren articles, and for that reason, in fairness to this particular portion of the budget, I would suggest um, that perhaps you prepare a Warren article to um, utilize the trust funds, since they have been sitting there for quite a long time and can certainly help defray the cost from the budget. Um, I can't tell you what the outcome of the vote will be when we do get to this part of the budget, but I would rather give you a little bit of a heads up, perhaps, to have something prepared so that you are covered. I just, uh, there are different ways to pay for things. You've been very creative this year, and I think we can put that in, and as we're in the 11th hour here, I would strongly recommend that. Thank you, Christy. I, I didn't mean to suggest that recommendation myself, just so I'm clear on that. You didn't mean to? I did not mean to. I just was curious oh. about whether or not it was a consideration. Okay. Because it seems to me that it's just generally good financial management, that when you need to finance something, you look at all the available financing options and choose the best one. And if we're not looking at them all, then we cannot reasonably be choosing the best one. And to be clear, we did not take a vote on that. That's a recommendation of just several members of this committee going forward because our time is short. And um, I just 
don't know what the outcome will be. We won't vote on this till Friday. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm done. I didn't ask. Oh, I'm sorry, Jerry. You left off Mike Love. I didn't see any more hands up. Well, All right, Jerry. No, no, we got with a question. Hands, Jerry. We go by, we go by hands. hands. I didn't Jerry. see him. Uh, is there a return on investment that was calculated with this 360, or it was just a nice thing to do, or what? Uh, we don't have a calculated cost, but there's savings as in regards to, like Steve had brought up and I had brought up earlier, in regards to uh, man hours and equipment. We won't have to have a mail server, and no, and they will not have to maintain the mail server. Then we'll, we won't have we to have storage that on space. A, a Thirty thousand dollar or twenty? What is it? Thirty. Twenty-four. Twenty-four thousand dollar a year on infinitum. There certainly should be a look at the return on investment and try to size that in terms of equipment savings, man hour savings, whatever. That's kind of where I'm coming from. What? Um, which is what I would have done if it was me. What are the uh, the uh, what, what what's driving this? A cloud storage issue. In other words, we don't have enough storage capability, so we go to the cloud to store and store our material. Is that what's driving this? I think that would be a portion of what's driving it, and then also the additional costs that are uh, in the future for the 360 or for the um, Office Pro of the $300 and. I think mostly the big thing would be the storage and the server, not having to have our own mail server, and the maintenance that our mail server requires. Hmm. And it's part of the future. Uh, well, that, the cloud. It's, it's a, I know I hear a lot about it, but. Uh, um. You can look at it another way, Jerry. SAU 90 has been on office for five years now. <laughs> And so they're trying to catch up to SAU 90. <laughs> These computers uh, that we're buying, uh, which uh, drives that replacement equipment account, mm -hmm. um, what's wrong with the computer we have? We have a cycle, a five-year cycle for all of our computers. And so <laughs> not all of them are always replaced, but we do have its uh, maintenance. It's so that we do not have to end up in a situation where we need to replace all of our computers all at the same time. They, they've had this in place for several years now, I believe. I mean, and most of the folks are using application-oriented software within their computers and email. That's about it, I'll bet. <coughs> the tax collector, the town clerk, the fireman, the policeman, they're using application-driven software for their particular ap operations. So... I mean, why we use play? a lot of Word and Excel also. Well, I mean, you can use Word as well, but I mean, email, application driven, <coughs> Word. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. My computer is about seven, eight years old. I don't have any problem with it. I mean, <laughs> it doesn't fail. And uh, it, it fits what I do with it. So I, I, I know there's a policy, if you will. There's probably a policy, but I, I wouldn't want to think we're simply swapping out every three or four or five years simply because the policy is driving us to do that. Well, we don't always replace all, we don't always get the 20 that is in the replacement, so that puts you behind right then and there. If you're supposed, to, if your policy has you replacing 20 every year, um, in 15, so far we have 10. We do have the purchase order for 10 more, like I said, but I know uh, in 14 we only purchased the 10, I believe, and not the whole 20. So you got a five-year plan to replace all PCs, so you're going to have all PCs replaced in five years, then you're going to start all over again? Nope, <laughs> because we have more than 20 PCs. All right, right gentlemen, 20. I'm going to have to insist, and lady, I'm going to have to insist that we start to wrap this up. Okay, Jer? Any other? Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you.